We live in the midst of a non-Christian culture, surrounded by people with opposite views and values. Often our beliefs differ from public opinion or popular trends. And sometimes this calls for us to take a stand against the cultural tide, to live a life worthy of the Lord. The people of Colossians face similar issues and Paul sent them a letter to encourage and uplift them, to teach the church how to pray with authority, develop a Christ-like worldview, and live focused, steady lives. Lives that constantly testify that God is working in them, that focus us on serving others, and that are united in love, triumphant in the Lord. One of the things that excite me the most um, in my life, and I'm, you know, talking to a lot of you, maybe all of you, the reason we are here is because we love Jesus. The uh, reason we are here is because we love um, his instructions. Um, in a world where it's so uh, confused, there is so much confusion in this world. There is so everything that is happening. The, the world in it itself is killing each other. It's, it's confused. It's, it's pursuing empty um, uh, things in life that at the end of the day, they come and they are unsatisfied. So they are trying something else. So they are trying. So, you know, people who started with a small little, you know, perhaps, you know, uh, 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 that drug uh, and, and, and all of a sudden, uh, they, they want more drugs. And all of a sudden, that, that, that becomes to an end, and then that's unsatisfied, and they want to try something else until eventually that kills their lives. The same thing with every single thing. You know, uh, the world is confused. Politics are against each other. Nations against uh, nations, just killing each other. Uh, uh, raising a, a generation who are against their parents. Parents abandoning kids, spouses getting divorced. And everything is, the world is a chaos right now that is just going nowhere. And you can see it in the news. You turn the news and you hear this report and you hear that report. And you will think, you know, Christianity is these false things with people are getting brainwashed, I'll tell you something, you know, when you find the love of God and you find who God is in your life and all of a sudden you begin to read these scriptures and he began to speak to you of who you really are and you become confident who, who you are and that attitude inside of you began to take shape and began to take form the character of Jesus and you became, becoming to know who you are in Christ Jesus and all of a sudden all the confusion and is outside of the insecurity that is outside it doesn't disturb you anymore it, it gives you that great uh, measure of concern because you know where the world is going but inside of you there is something that stands firm in peace knowing that God is good and he is for you and that we can find that when we read the scriptures when we have a relationship with Jesus amen church um, the, the, more than ever, and I keep on saying that, it, it, seem, it seems that I'm a, somebody that repeats the same words uh, again and again and a lot. And that, but more than ever, we need this book in our lives. More than ever, we need the Bible. Not a false religion, not a false religion that teaches you how to criticize the world, how to criticize others but a true relationship with the Holy Spirit, with God who is here in this room right now. And, uh, and I love that. And um, I'm very excited to start this new series on Colossians. We, we did Philippians no long ago. And I love that. And I'm, and I'm thinking, that's what we need to be doing. We need to just be learning from the scriptures. Right? Um, one of the things I love about this as well is that the fact that, you know, we read, like, say, right now, we're going to start reading from, you know, we're going to go verse by verse and see where we finish. Um, and I love because, you know, Colossians, or actually Paul wrote quite a few letters from prison. You know, Philippians was one of them. He, this one, he wrote it almost at the same time that he wrote Ephesians as well. You know, you see a lot of the similarities in some of the, uh, some of the notes that he wrote to the church. And, uh, but obviously different, different cities, different towns and villages. Um, and, and the church was, was dealing with the different things than the towns, you know, um, uh, were, were dealing with at that time. Colossians was, um, uh, the, the people of, 
of Colossians, um, there was it's a city that was prosperous, very prosperous. They they used to be well known for their textiles. They used to, you know, if you want some really good clothing, you don't have to go to Italy. You have to go. You you go here to this to Colossi. Um, um, uh, to buy good textiles. It was very prosperous. Um, and, and then the revolution happened. Something happened in that town. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and the prosperity that it became like, you know, it, it started to go down. By the time when, when this church was planted, uh, the town itself was coming into a crisis, financial crisis. But other religious religion were coming and uh, the people were very open to anything, to any, any kind of religion. Any kind of, um, yeah, that sounds good. I'll follow that. That sounds good. I'll follow that. I'll, that sounds good. I'll add that to my calendar. You know what I'm saying? And, and to my belief systems and things like that. So it was a town, a city, and it was very confused, very welcoming to everything. And then we're going to read later on uh, 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 Epiphas here um, who was sent to uh, plant this church. It was implanted by Paul. It was planted by this guy who became saved in the time where Paul was um, in, 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 in Rome and uh, in planting, this, uh, planting this church. He was actually teaching in there, and he was there for uh, over two years, and you can see it in, uh, in Acts, the book of Acts 19. You can read it. And this guy became a Christian, felt the calling of God, and he went to Colossae, and, uh, and he planted this church. He went back later to Paul, and we're going to read in a minute, um, and he reported everything that the church was doing. They were, he was bringing good testimonies of the whole church. The church was on fire for the Lord. It was just on fire for the Lord. And when Paul heard that, he got so excited. He began to pray. He was in prison. So let's go to, to the very beginning of this, of, of this book, and we are going to start reading this. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So don't have my computer. I brought the Bible. God, I was like, you know what? I haven't preached from, from this book in a long time. I mean, I preached from the book. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what kind of a church is this? I preached from the book, but it wasn't an actual physical book. You know, it's like I write all my notes in the scriptures, and you'll see it here. And uh, it's, 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 the, it's, what, it's what the book teaches you, right? It's what the book teaches you. It's, it's the words that you hear, the words that you read and come into your heart and become alive. It's the word of God, right? Uh, but I got so excited about ah, the paper. So... Um, Bear with me. We're going to have fun today. <laughs> All right. So Colossians 1. Star, um, uh, Paul is always very clear of how he, um, um, you know, uh, writes. And, and um, he's very clear of, of in his position as a believer. And uh, so he, he writes this. He says, this letter is from Paul. He's writing it there. And it says, chosen by God, by the will of God. To be an apostle of Jesus Christ. So he's introducing himself. He says, first of all, I am Paul. I'm not an apostle first. And then my name, you know, uh, the value that I have, it doesn't come from what I do. The value I have is because I am Paul, son of God. Right? But I have a calling. And in my calling, that doesn't define me. Right? This is what I do. I, by the will of God, I was chosen to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Apostle is somebody that plants churches, somebody that teaches, somebody that, that delivers people, somebody that is encourager. You know, it moves in prophecy, it moves in healings, it moves in all of the all of the things that is like is like the like almost like the mini fivefold ministry all together. You know what I'm saying? Um, without becoming independent, of course. And uh, it says here, and from our brother Timothy. It's understood that um, uh, Paul was writing it from inside the prison, and he was dictating this to Timothy. Timothy was outside writing, taking notes. Are you with me? And then he was writing this. And here, we are writing to God's holy people. To who? He was writing not to the, not to the town, not to the world. He was writing this to the church. The scriptures is for that. In the city of Colossae, who are faithful brothers and sisters of Christ. 
May our God, may, may God our Father give you, and, and here is something that I mentioned last time, that Paul was very uh, clear in indicating this to the church. He says, may, our, may, may God our Father give you grace and give you peace. And, 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 and then we were, we were reading that. I mentioned that before, but for the people who didn't, weren't here at that time, I want to say this. He always say grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace. Often we go to a funeral and we come to somebody that doesn't know Jesus. He doesn't know. It doesn't matter if that person knows Jesus or no. We always come and say, so peace be with you. But peace is impossible to find it without, first of all, knowing the grace of God. Peace is impossible to find. I'm talking about the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. The peace of God that stays with you when turbulence and, 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 and chaos is around you. It's that peace that, that puts you to sleep. It's that peace that makes you trust. Even when your finances are going, uh, uh, you know, like not the way you were planning it. Even with the world, even when you just lost a job, even when you just gone through a breakup, then it's, then it's, then it's, it may be breaking you. And, and pain, where, you know, that doesn't, you know, uh, uh, pulls us away from pain and from the reality. But it gives us that peace. I am talking about that peace that surpasses all understanding. The peace that God gives you, the Bible says, Jesus himself said, I am the prince of peace. I am the only one who gives you that peace. I'm talking about that peace. It's not the absence of problems, but it's the peace in the middle of problems. Paul said this, first of all, for you to recognize that peace, you first of all need to accept and recognize grace. And grace is the unfavored, you know, Unmerited favor, thank you. I have my translator here, <laughs> my wife uh, of God. It's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the favor that we don't deserve. The favor that we don't deserve. That Jesus came and obtained. When you accept the grace of God, Jesus, you walk in that peace. Paul always mentioned that. In most of his letters, 13 letters, you will find that peace, no, grace and peace be with you. Understanding that. And then continue. Are you, are you there? He continues, says, we always pray for you. I love this part here. He says, we always pray for you, and we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Why did he say that? Why, why was he so excited about praying for them? Because we heard, we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all God's people. Paul didn't assume that because he was hearing a good reports from this. You have to remember one thing. He's not talking to an individual here. He's not talking to Paul, I mean to uh, Timothy or Titus or Silas. And, and he's talking to an entire church. That means the, entire, the spirit of the church was in unity, loving God, loving people, connecting with God, connecting with people at all times. Are you with me, church? And, and he says here, I heard that of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for God's people. Therefore, I have been praying for you. How many times we often we say, oh, that person is doing so well, and we don't pray for that person. That person doesn't need prayer. Right? Oh, well, that person is struggling. We pray for that person. And yes, we are to pray for the person who is struggling. But when we see doing, somebody doing so well, God is calling us to pray for them as well. Are you with me, church? When we see other churches as believers, we are part of this church, this new church. And I love what God is doing in, in our lives. I love what God is doing in our families. And, but when we see other churches prospering and growing, we are to thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in other churches. Are you with me, church? It's not a competition. The competition is not there in other churches. The competition is the world who is killing people, who is stealing people from, from the truth into a lie. Are you with me, church? But when we see that God is blessing somebody, when we see God is blessing other people, when we see God is moving, when we see somebody like Ella who is responding to the Lord, it's like, oh, Ella is doing well. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye. No, it's like God continue to do the work in Ella 
because we thank you for what you're already doing in her and thank you that she's responding to you. What a spirit creates in us when we bless the people who God is blessing. Are you with me? And it tells you here because it says here, it says that you love for others. In, fa- in verse 5, it explains it. Which come from your what? It comes. So the faith that you have and the love that you have for people, love for people, it can only come from this, the confident hope. Of what God has reserved for you in heaven. You know that the reason we don't love the way God wants us to love is because often we are insecure. Hello? The reason we don't love how God wants us to love is because very often we are insecure. Insecurity creates in us envy because we are not happy that someone else is prospering, that somebody else is not doing well, that, that they is doing well, that somebody else is doing better than us. And we become, become so insecure that we think that because God is blessing them, he ran out of supplies, he ran out of resources, he, he ran out of provision, and he doesn't have anything else for me. But when we are secure and when we have our confidence, a confidence in us, we are going to learn how to love. Because we know that God will not take away from me to give to somebody. That he is more than enough to bless me and to bless them. But that comes only when we are confident in that hope that God has reserved for us. He is creating a big mansion in heaven for us and his provision and his healing and his peace for us over here. You and I want to learn how to love others and how to love the world and how to love people. We need to learn how to be confident that God has something for us. And his promises are yes and are amen in us. And when we grow in that confidence, hope in that confidence in our lives, we're going to learn how to love the way that God wants us to love. Isn't that amazing? Amazing how Paul describes that. He says that came from there. He's going to repeat it again and again. It says, you have had this expectation, he said. You know, um, ever since you first heard the truth of God, of the good news, since you believe that, you have had that expectation. You love people. Bless you, baby Samuel. He is, he is saying yes, amen. Verse 6. I love this thing here. This same good news. This same what? This, this same good news. The, the good news that you receive. Because we some, sometimes we think, oh, Christianity is just a small little thing in, in our small little environment. No, it's not. <laughs> it says here, this, this same good news that, you came, that, that came to you is going out all over the world. It's all over the world. This good news that you are that, that, that you receive, that you believe, that is changing you, and that's why you have faith, and that's why you're loving others, is going all around the world. And it says here, and is bearing fruit everywhere. How? How is bearing fruit? By what? By changing lives. Just as it changed your life from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful, here comes again, grace. Salvation is not a matter of saying you are safe. Salvation produces fruit in us. Are you with me? Listen to this. You cannot say 
then you are safe is the, if, if, if as an evidence there are no changes in you that are being taking place. And you, you know what I'm saying? The Bible says here that the good news is spreading all over the world and is going around and is changing people's life. Just like it changed you, he said. And he's talking about to an entire church from the day you first heard and understood the gospel, the good news. Salvation is an evident, is evident in our lives that God has been touching and changing our lives. The good news of Jesus Christ is not come to church on Sunday mornings. And then you can go and do everything you want after that. Salvation is not go to a Bible school and learn stuff and then go and do everything you want because it's all about what you learn. Salvation is not about just giving money to the poor. Salvation is not just doing all of that, which everything that I just mentioned is good and is important for our growth. Salvation is a life that has been changed and transformed and is becoming more like Jesus, loving like Jesus, forgiving like Jesus, walking like Jesus has. There is a fruit, there is an evidence that it takes place when we hear the gospel. Are you with me, church? How I'm, I, I'm to know that I am safe when somebody, you know what, and I, I love that. And I know Leah, Leah shared this. I was sharing the same thing with, uh, with the praying, praying team this morning. I love that. It, it really took me by surprise. We were about to have dinner last night. And then this text from, from a friend who I'm meeting next week. And, you know, hopefully I'm going to bring him to church. Because it's, 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 it, it, things happen. I love how the... In his confusion and in his struggle, the first thing that he did is, I'm going to turn to somebody that I have seen fruit. And I'm not saying just because it was me. It, it shocked me that God uses maybe the stories on my Instagram. <laughs> maybe they, maybe, maybe he's, he's my friend on Facebook. Maybe they put, I have no idea what happened. But being safe and being a life that has been changed by the gospel has evidence. It has a fruit. Are you with me, church? And I love this, this thing here. And I'm sure that, that people, I'm sure that your parents, I'm sure that your friends are seeing something different in you. Keep on going that way. Keep on loving that way. I remember when I just became a Christian at the, at the very beginning. I, I used to almost use the Bible against my, my parents. You know what I'm saying? Almost like a, I, I would, come on, be safe. And I almost like, a, come on, be safe. You, oh, you know, like, like almost like, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, you're going to go to hell because you're doing this. And because I was learning stuff. I was learning stuff. I, I was learning that the life, the decisions that we make, I make a huge difference in our lives. And I became very judgmental at the beginning until I began to learn that it's the loving, the love, the loving, the, the loving kindness of God that leads us to repentance and not our judgment. So when I began to learn that and began to, oh, that's right. So my parents will not change by me telling them, change. My parents will change when I become to be obedient to them. And all of a sudden, they come to my house, my, my, my bedroom, and my, bedroom, my bed is done. It's made. Oh, Pepe, you are too much. No, it's true. When all of a sudden, I go there on time. When all of a sudden, I begin to. So my friends will begin to change when they see fruit in my life. Are you with me, church? That is what the Bible is saying here. It's telling us. If we want the world to change, they have to see fruit in us. What kind of fruit? Love. Forgiveness. Walking in peace in the middle of chaos. Are you with me, church? Not in anger. Not in judgment. When, we, when they begin to see that fruit in us, 
is when the world will begin to see. You know, the, I love this part here when it says the, the gospel, the same gospel is going around the world, changing people's life just as it changed your life from the first day you heard and understood heard and understood i love this part here first heard and understood people also not only need to see it first they need to hear it as well you need to hear it as well i need to hear it as well people need to hear the gospel the gospel need to be preached it's not just just i mean you show it with your life but then you preach it with your words you preach it you teach it are you with me, church? You know, I remember many years ago here, I was part of a, I was part of a church where we used to go to the streets and, and give coffee uh, to the poor. And that's what, you know what, praise God. And we, we will continue doing that. And we have done it before. And we're doing it. We will do it again. And I remember the first time that we went. And then we gave hot dogs. And we, get, we gave coffee. And we gave uh, hot chocolate in a very cold winter. And then we go there. And then we just be with them with them. And then it's like, okay, but no one single mention of the name of Jesus to anybody. Not a single thing of, can I pray for you? And we went back. And, and all of a sudden, I'm like, hey, how come we, 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 we didn't share the, anything, you know, the gospel to them? I'm coming from Mexico where they don't give you anything. They just say, they start preaching the gospel to you in the streets. And that's how some of our friends, right, Mauricio, became saved. Some of them are pastors right now. We used to go into the streets, into the, park, into the, into the marketplace, and we used to stand in the middle of nowhere and begin to preach the gospel. And people come, and it's like they hear it, and they give their life to Jesus, and bring them to church, walk with them, train them, teach them, you know, and then send them to do the same thing. That's what we do it there. Over here, we do it the opposite. We do with coffee like that. And I, it, which is both are good. Just like, we just need to do something. But we need to preach. And I remember them saying to me, oh, we're just developing a relationship. You know what? We went back again and again, and we never saw that same person again. We saw somebody different, somebody different, somebody different all the time. You will never, you don't know if you have time to, to build a relationship with them. Are you with me, church? You don't know if we have time. We don't know if only one opportunity we have to share the gospel. I love this friend who texted me yesterday. And I'm sharing this because I'm so excited. And I feel like God wants me, reminding me to do the things that I used to do. I do it still, but it reminds me. It reminded me. He said to me, my friend, as he texted me, he says, Pepe, I know that we always argue about your beliefs, and I always made fun. But deep inside, I have always believed. And when he told me that, I'm like, you don't know when you're sharing the love of God with others, how it's landing in people's hearts. You have no idea if six, seven years later it's going to bear fruit. But every time that we preach the word, it's like a seed planted in the heart of somebody. You they may say, no, I don't need it. I don't need it. And they realize, wait, actually, I do need it. I love this because he says, when you first heard, when you heard, and then what is the second thing? And what? I see some people falling in love, so I'm asking you to, to respond so you don't fall in I mean, fall in, I'm in love. Falling asleep. <laughs> falling asleep. Falling in love. <laughs> what am I talking about? See, Leah, you distract me so much, baby. <laughs> so distract me so much. Falling in love. This is the time when you get somebody sings. Uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> When, when, all right, let's go back to the scriptures. When I first heard and understood, understanding. When I first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. Look what it says in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. This is Jesus. Jesus saying this and the importance of this. I'll read it. Is there... 
Jesus, it says here, Jesus replies, you must love your God. With what? With all your what? Heart. With all your soul, your feelings. Your feelings. I hate you, but I love God, so I have to forgive you. You just hurt me, but I love God, so he's my healer, so I'm going to forgive you. I'm not going to wait for you to, to forgive me in order for my heart to be healed. I know God loves me, and he's my healer. Are you with me? So with all my heart, with all my soul, and what? In what mind? What my what? My mind. I need to understand who I am loving. I need to understand who I am following. I need, I need to understand what the gospel is all about. People, we live in a generation, all of us, old and young, that if you know the truth of the gospel, you will be drifted away. If you, know, if you don't know the truth of the word of God, you will be just taken away from the truth. The world is knowing. The world understands so much that can come to you and argue and convince you that what you are believing is wrong. Are you with me? Movies, teachers, podcasts, famous people, everything is against your faith. And the only thing that is going to make you stand firm is by knowing and understanding who you are following and what are you reading and why are you receiving when you understand that God loves you, when you understand the promises of God, when you understand what the Bible says, you are going to be confirmed in what you believe. And you're going to be confirmed in, a middle, in the midst of a confusion, in a confused generation. We're going to go fast here. You know, understand. And Paul, and Paul, Paul mentioned this many times. He said that to uh, in, in Ephesians 1. Uh, 15 and, and 17, he, he, almost the same thing. I'm, I don't know if we can go there or not, but he said the same thing to the church in Ephesians, in Eph Ephesus. He said the same thing to them. I heard of your good faith, so I pray for you that you will have a spirit of truth, and revelation, and understanding. It says wisdom and revelation, understanding of the word of God. Let's continue here. But you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. And then you learn about the good news from Epaphras. Epaphras, our beloved, you know, I mentioned that, co-worker, that he is Christ's faithful servant. And he is helping us on, the, on your behalf. He told us, and I mentioned this before, he has told us about the love, your love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. So we have not stopped praying for you since we heard about you, pray for people. Pray for people. Pray for Ella. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for, pray for people who are next to you right now. Pray for me. Please pray for me. Please pray for me. Pray for the leaders. Pray for the people who, who love you. Pray for the people who are coming to church. Pray for the people who just gave their life to, to Jesus. We have some new babies in, this, in, the, in the faith here in our community right now. Pray for them. Be with them. Invite them for coffee. Walk with them. Spend time with them. Walk with them. Do the work of a missionary. Here at home. And you will see how God will begin to see your faithfulness in the little things. And will begin to call you. And will begin to open the doors for you. And it's going to anoint you and provide for you and open doors. And it's going to give you grace and favor. And he's going to call you to do what he called you from the very beginning. But he's waiting for you to be faithful in the small little things. Are you with me, church? I love this part here. I just keep on praying for you, the Bible says here. I pray for you since I heard that you were doing this. It says, we ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom. And here you go again. And what? Understanding. Wisdom. Spiritual wisdom and understanding. It says here, then 
The way you live will always honor and please the Lord of your life, and your life will produce every kind of. So what the, the love and the passion that you are telling me that you had, he's saying this to the people. For others, I pray to God that he will continue to give you revelation so you can understand the perfect will of God. Why? So you can continue to grow in, the, in your faith. You will continue to grow. People of God, people of connection, you who are here in this room, you need to understand the love of God, that he loves you so desperately, that he sent his son to die for you. Because he values you and he loves you and he wants you in heaven for an eternity with him. No, so he can make you religious. No, he can make you a boring person. No, he can make you somebody that has no life. And you just, I gave my life to Jesus, so I lost my life. I don't have fun with friends anymore. No, I, I am now really having fun with friends. And now I am really enjoying life. Now I'm really walking in peace. Now I'm really doing this because I met him. He saved me. And not only this for this world, but for eternity. You and I need to understand this. We need to, we need to get the love of God for our lives. And we need to go into the scripture so we can understand who we are worshiping. Are you with me, church? Our worship will change when we understand who we are worshiping. Our worship will change when we understand that God is a God who is worthy to be praised, to be worshipped. Are you with me, church? Our worship, we will not be the same. We will not worship the same. We will not sing the same. We will not pray the same if when we understand who God is and his love that he has for us. There's so many quiet people here. I'm, good. I'm glad that you are here. Are you, are you thinking about something else right now? But I don't know. But what I'm saying is like, yes, amen. Maybe I don't know. But come on, Latinos, you need to, you need to show some of this. Uh, you know. Hey, I don't think I've seen anybody more passionate than a Canadian cheering for the Canucks. <laughs> or for Canada. Come on. Or for the Blue Jays. Or for the Raptors. We can do this. We can say yes and amen to this. Because this is understanding. I pray that you will have wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live. Then the way you live. When you have wisdom and understanding, then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord. And your life will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while you will grow as you learn to know God. What's the scriptures here? Better and better. Then you will grow to learn God better and better. I gave my life to Jesus when I was 17 years old. I'm right now. <laughs> and I don't think I know a fraction of who God is. I don't know a fraction of who God is. We just went and spent... A, Last week, we had the opportunity to go to a pastor's retreat. Lee and I went to a pastor's retreat. We always like to invest in, 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 in our lives, in our, you know, and because you never stop growing. We went there, and I can sit down, you know, I can see, as I heard that sermon. I heard that preaching. Oh, that's scripture. I know where you're going. And all of a sudden, God gives you surprises, like he started talking about something that you've never even thought he was there. Like, what? Oh, he's here. I mean, how did I miss that? Are you with me? You know, every time that you read a new scripture, it's like, it's like that part of the movie, your favorite movie. Have you watched that part of your favorite movie? You laugh about that, that scene. You know, you've seen it with your friends, and, you know, you laugh about it, uh, you know, just like a, a, a part of the, of the movie, and then you go back and you watch it again, and you realize and it has other funny parts as well. And the more you watch it, it's like, oh, my goodness. And then you send it. The scripture is like that. All of a sudden, you are reading something. And all of a sudden, something jumps. And God reveals to you his truth. And God wants you to understand him so you can bear fruits. All the while, you continue to grow. And you continue to know him better and better. Better and better. I'm going to go really fast for the next ones here because I want to, I want to at least get something ready for next Sunday. <laughs> Man, I, we, we can just honestly, just from the letters of Paul, 
13 letters, if we do just the letters of Paul, it will be more than a year. If we go verse by verse, it will be more like 13. That means like 12 maybe. We can push it. We can do one letter a month. Last time we did eight weeks for the one letter. Yeah, I don't know how it's going to be, but I am enjoying it. I, I mean, I, I enjoying this. My wife is enjoying it too. <laughs> Says, verse 11, and we will go fast. He said, we also pray that you will be strengthened with all of his glorious power. So you will have all the endurance. Oh, I can preach about that, but I will not. Endurance and patience you need. You want to endure and you want to have patience? Continue to pray. Continue to seek the Lord. It says that you may be filled with joy. Always thanking the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. His people who live where? In the light. You cannot say you are his people if you live in darkness. You can't. You can't. You must live in the light. You must live in the light. The light of Jesus. It has to be. That is where you're going to change. That's where he operates when he puts you in the light. Like a doctor. I, I build dental offices. And the most important thing of the dental office is the light that goes on the chair. You can have every decoration, but if you don't have the light, the, the doctor will not operate properly. But when you put the light, the doctor can see everything that, is, that he needs to do. You want to change. I want to change. We need to be in the light because that's where God operates best. It says, it says and it says, who, who, who live in the light. It says, verse 13, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness. He who rescued us from where? From the kingdom of darkness. You cannot say you're a believer and still be in the kingdom of darkness. And transfer us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. He transferred us. There is a transfer that took place the day that you gave your life to Jesus. You know why you're struggling so much? When you, for some of the new people here who got, just gave your life to Jesus, you know why you're struggling so much? Because for so long, you were, you were in the kingdom of darkness. For so long, you were so used to um, lying, so used to stealing, so used to just, you know, getting drunk and sleeping around and lying and, and having not whatsoever anything conscious, and, and a conscience inside of you that will tell you that's wrong. You were there. You were, you were in, in, in broken on the inside with lack of forgiveness, with pain in your life, with confusion. You don't know where you're going. And God in his infinite love comes and pulls you from there. He sent his son. Somebody shared the gospel with you, like we were saying. You heard, and you turned around, and he put you from there. And he now bring you, brought you, the Bible says here, into the kingdom of God, of his son, into the kingdom of light. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you begin to realize that the things that were so naturally normal for you, all of a sudden it's like, I don't feel comfortable doing this anymore. And peace begins to be shaken in you when you go back to trying to live that, but that's not you. And the enemy comes to you and say, hey, what you're doing is not you. This is who you are. And that's why it's a, a spiritual warfare that is happening right now because he, the enemy, doesn't want you to be here where you can be changed and transformed and love it. I'll tell you something. It's worth this, the fight. It's worth staying together and staying there. But there is going to be a fight. The Bible says here, we just finished reading, that he pulls up. Please keep the scriptures there at all times. Thank you. Um, the Bible says here that he has transferred us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom. It's, a trans, it's, it's like a, he, pulled, he cut the roots and pulled us from there. And now he planted us into his kingdom of God, into the kingdom of love and forgiveness and, and peace and restoration and, and renewal. 
Are you with me? Where he's preparing you, he's teaching you, he's training you, he's molding you, he's giving you his character, he's loving on you. But all of a sudden, it's like, oh, something pulls you back because that's our nature, right? And then the enemy says, you belong to here. See, you don't belong there, you belong to here. And then then there's a confusion happening. Come back to the kingdom of God. Come back to him. Come back to forgiveness. Come back to somebody to help you. Come back to church. Come back to him. Because here is what is going to take complete change and transformation in your life. The Bible said this, and he, he, I love that. He says, he changed you there. He transferred you from that kingdom into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased you. He, bought, he paid. He paid for your freedom and forgave your sins. Oh, my goodness. I'm not going to go there. I think I'm going to finish there. It's a beautiful part of theology that just takes place. But maybe that goes well with Easter. <laughs> I, I, I think I mentioned this before. You know, when you prepare a sermon, you prepare a beginning and an ending, and you finish with a good scripture and and it's good. And I love those ones. But I love when... I'm, I'm just going to finish here. Because it's time to go have lunch. Some of you are hungry. Some of you are thinking already about lunch. But I want to finish here. And there is a... We'll continue next week. It's a beautiful part. I, I, I Actually, I believe for some of you who want to learn theology... Theology means the study of God, the study of God's character, right? That's what theology means. And the next few verses, he describes the perfect theology of the character of God. We're going to learn that um, in the next time we meet.